Praise the Lord. Welcome to Oasis Christian Center this Wednesday night. We're so glad to have you. And uh, we're just excited about what God's going to do in this service tonight. Amen. Because we're two or three are gathered together in his name. He is in the midst. So he is in the midst of us tonight. And I know that he is going to minister to your need, whatever you have need of tonight. So just be ready to receive from God. And I want to start out tonight with Psalms chapter 95, verses 2 and 3. It says, everyone can meet his face with a thankful heart. Don't hold back your praises. Make him great by your shouts of joy. For the Lord is the greatest of all, King God over all other gods. Amen. He is the greatest of all. We come before him tonight with a thankful heart. Amen. And we're not holding back our praises tonight. Amen. We're going to praise him with all of our hearts, mind, soul, spirit, everything. Amen. We're going to give him great shouts of joy tonight. Because I have joy in my heart. Don't you? Amen. We have joy in our heart. Because he is such an awesome God. And he has done so much for us. And the exciting thing is he's not through. Amen. He's got so much more that he's going to do for us. Amen. So be ready to receive what God has for you. Praise God. Praise. We'll turn it over to the praise team now. Hallelujah. Glory.
performance. Thank you for keeping us through the years, Lord. We're so grateful and so thankful. We give you the glory.
Well, that was awesome praise and worship. And I tell you, the praise team, it's just so awesome to look out here and see everybody just being filled with the Spirit. And we know that that's what it is because we, we can feel it. And it's one mind, one accord. And that's where we're getting our, our focus right now on Jesus. On Jesus. Well, we've come to that time where we give back to the Father what he has so graciously given to us this week. I know that everyone has something to be grateful for because we're all back here together tonight. So, you know, we must have had a car or we had a way to get here. We must have had some gas. We all look like we've had some food. And we got, you know, so that's good. And we're all smiling. So that's good, too. You know. So the Lord is good. And we give him thanks. And we're going to come before him. We're going to take our tithes in our right hand because we believe in doing the right thing before God. And that is... 10%, that's where it begins. I know people say, well, that's the law, that's the Old Testament. We don't go by that, we go by grace. You know what? It's by the grace of God, yes. by the death of Jesus Christ on that yes. cross, by Him rising up again, by God giving us a pardon for our sins, that we are even able to love unselfishly and give. Much less, you know, when you think about giving to people, you can do that, you know, because you can see them. But sometimes it gets kind of difficult to just say we're giving and, and where is it going? Well, let me tell you, it's going into the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's going to promote the gospel. So if you're saved, then you should want that gospel to go forth. Amen. You should want yes. to give unto the kingdom of God. And here at Oasis, we believe in that. We believe in the covenant. We believe in the blessings of God on the tithe. So if you will, with tithe in right hand, repeat after me. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, Interest in income, Interest in income. Rebates, and rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, discounts and dividends. Checks, in the mail. checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises. finding money, finding money. Bills, decreased. bills decreased, bills paid off, bills paid off. Blessings, and increase. blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. For, meeting for meeting all my financial needs that I may now have. That I may now have. More than, enough More than enough to give into the kingdom of God, to give into the kingdom of God and, promote the and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here at Oasis, there are a few ways that you can give, and they are online at www.paypalme forward slash Oasis Family Church. We also have https osvhub.com forward slash Oasis Family Church forward slash giving forward slash funds. Text to give at 334-274-7885. And you can find us at www.oasisfamilychurch.net. There, there you'll see the donate button and you can click on it and find all these ways to give. Or you can use Cash App, that is the dollar sign, Oasis Family Church, no spaces. And we also have donations through the mail. And that is Post Office Box 246, Miss Station, Alabama, 36877. Postage paid envelopes are here available free from the church. If you'd like to come by and pick them up, better yet, come and join us. All right, we're going to have an awesome message tonight. Carla, or Sharda, as I call her, <laughs> no, Carla, Carla, she is going to be teaching tonight on Budgeting to be a blessing. Well, how appropriate. I didn't even know that was back there. That's the Holy Spirit. We're blessed to be a blessing. So we'll call forth Carla. Well, praise the Lord. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Thank you today um, for bringing us together to commune together, Lord Jesus. We ask that you bless each and every person under the sound of my voice, whether they be here in the sanctuary or watching us on Facebook. We just ask that you um, uh, give me the correct words to say, only what you want me to say and not what I want to say. Love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. 
So we have made it to part three. And it is our conclusion of um, freedom from uh, financial debt. Um, and so the Lord was, you know, when he gave me the fact that I was going to be able to three, um, he let me know that um, we weren't just getting out of debt um, just to be doing it and to pad our bank accounts and savings accounts. But he let me know that we are actually doing this so that we can be a blessing to someone else. Um, so, again, I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> I am believing that um, we can, uh, God wants us to be the lender and not the borrower. Um, so just to recap, um, when we discuss um, freedom from uh, debt for one, we okay, um, did an assessment on ourselves. Um, we have to examine ourselves um, based on 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Um, we made a plan, which was writing the vision, Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3. Um, and then we executed said plan, um, looking at James 2.17, which says, faith without works is dead. So then we got on to um, debt part two, freedom from debt part two, which was from stressed to blessed. And there we had to get our house, our house in order. Um, and we used Hezekiah as an example in Isaiah 38, one through five. Um, we paid ourselves, um, and then we became, uh, realized that we were God's beneficiaries. So all of the work that we have done to become debt free has led up to this moment right here yeah. to help God's people. Okay. Um, I know you're thinking, what are those crickets out here, out there? Um, but yes, that is what he wants us to do. And so I know that you thought you were doing this so that you could go traveling and shopping and, you know, just saving money and enjoying life. But God wants you to do all those things, but they're not as important as what he wants us to do. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't believe me, it says so in Galatians 5 and 13. In the um, NIV version, it says you. My brothers and sisters were called to be free, debt free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Okay? So, if you're not sure about that one, then in John 15, 12 through 13, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Luke 12, 33 through 34 says, sell your possessions and give to charity. Make, make yourself money belts, which do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes, nor moth destroys. Um, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mark 10 and 21 says, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now, I know you got to those last two and you were like, sell all my stuff and give it away. Um, no. <laughs> well, um, he's not really, you know, saying that. What he's saying is that, you know, you can, um, you can go and give above and beyond to help someone else. So you're, you know, you are sacrificing because that is what you're doing when you lay down your life. You are sacrificing for someone else. And so we can do that um, by going above and beyond and helping others. Now, um, I'm also not telling you to live poor, like, like you're poor because that's not what God said. Um, because according to um, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes became poor, 
that ye through his poverty might be rich. And that means rich in, you know, love, rich in life, rich in those things that where you can go and bless someone else. Okay. Now, um, my thing is, is that um, I do love the things, the earthly possessions. Okay. Not above God. But there are some perks. Okay. But those earthly possessions cannot go with you. That's right. And why would you want to take them with you? Because um, there are better treasures in heaven, okay? So you can enjoy the things that are here on this earth. Just don't overindulge in them to where the, you can't, God can't see his vision for you because you have all this money stacked in your face, these possessions, these things that are controlling you that aren't necessarily making you happy, but they're to you know, show everyone else, this is what I have. Uh -huh. um, so, as I was going through this, um, there is a plethora of scriptures about how God wants us to help the unfortunate. And so, I'm going to give some of those to you. <laughs> so, Hebrews 13 and 16 in the NIV says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Matthew 5, 42, NIV. Give to, one, give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Now, that one was um, a little tricky for me because, you know, I'm like, borrowing? Yeah, some people don't believe in giving back <laughs> after they borrow. But then, you know, along the way, the Lord taught me that if I can't afford to let it go, don't let anyone borrow it, okay? Um, and I did find a scripture that said, you're not supposed to ask for it back if they borrow from you and don't give it, don't pay you. Um, and if they steal from you, you're not supposed to ask for that back. And it's funny because, you know, when we, things are stolen from us, the first thing we do is going to call the police and say, this was stolen. And according to God's word, we're not supposed to do that, um, which I thought was very surprising. Um, and I do have that scripture. Uh, would I really? I know it's, it's here. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, let's see. And then, go back here. Sorry about that. Okay. And then in Romans 12, 13, in the NIV says, Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Proverbs 3, 27, in the uh, NIV says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. So that tells us that sometimes we may not have it to give, right? So the Lord doesn't want you to give when you are in need. Because how can you help someone when you need to be helped yourself? You know, um, and so he wants to, you to do it when it is appropriate when you can afford to do it, when you have the time to do it, things like that. Um, Luke 3, 10 through 11 in the King James Version says, He answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, uh, let him do likewise. So that means that if you have extra, bless someone else with it. If you have food and you know someone's hungry, bless that person with, uh, with the meal. Um, it, I have, and I, I've spoken on this before, I um, ran into um, a man in Phoenix City who um, every time I, I heard this voice and, and he's always singing Christian music. And I heard this voice, and I'm like, oh, my God. 
gosh, he, this is beautiful. Like the voice was beautiful, but I never saw him. And then I would continue to go to the area and I would hear him. And finally I saw him and he was, um, you know, down and out. Um, but the one thing I noticed about him, he never asked for help. Um, and so one day, you know, I was talking to him and I let him know, I was like, oh my gosh, you have a beautiful voice. And although he didn't have much, he said, hey, God is so good to me. He, is, he has blessed me so. And I thought, here I was that day complaining because, you know, of the price of something in the store. And this person is just blessed to be alive. You know, that was his thought. And so... Um, I had a little change in my pocket and I gave, you know, gave it to him and he was like, oh, thank you so much. He was very appreciative. And then I would run into him again, still singing, still not asking for help. Um, so I made it my mission because the Lord put it on my heart to bless him. And so I would, every time I would see him, I would bless him and, um, one day he said, hey, friend. And I said, hey, friend. I said, you know, I've been, we've been communicating, but I have no idea what your name is. You know, um, it was just that the Lord sent me to him to be a blessing. And um, no matter what amount I gave him, he was happy with what he had. Um, and then I met his sister and she had just the same, you know, vibrant spirit um, and I asked them, you know, asked them their names and they told me. And one day I saw her in the store and I called her by name. And she said, oh my gosh, you know my name? You remember me? And I thought, wow, the smallest things that we can do for people, you know, is a blessing to them. Just remembering their names was amazing to them. I Even when days I didn't have money, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I don't have anything. And they're like, no, you're fine. Thank you for stopping by and talking to us. So you can be a blessing to someone without being a financial blessing. Yes. Um, so then in Matthew 10 and 8 in the uh, New Living Translation, it says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. And if you are a follower of Christ, you know God. Christ has given us so much freely. Everything that we have, he gives to us freely. And so we are to do that and do the same to others. Deuteronomy 15 and 11 in the Amplified Version. For the poor will never cease to be in the land. So that means there are always going to be someone who is poor and going to be in need. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and to your poor in your land. Isaiah 1, 17, in the uh, New Living Translation, says, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. And fight the rights of widows. You see, those are the less fortunate. Um, and so... And God is commanding this. This is not something I'm making up. These are scriptures that are in the Bible. Um, Romans 12 and 10 in the New Living Translation says, Love each other with genuine affection. Not the fake stuff. You need to be real about it. Um, don't do things just so that others, you can say, Hey, look what I did for this person. You should never let the right hand know what the left is doing and vice versa. So you do these things um, with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Um, so as I was saying earlier, helping others does not always have to be financial. Um, in Galatians 6 and 2, in the New Living Translation, it says share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. So the Lord is asking you to uh, share each other's burdens. Um, when someone is grieving, you know, you can be a support that way. 
Um, it, it could be uh, they need a ride somewhere. You can be a support that way and not ask them for gas money. Because I know some people who would do that. You ask them for help and the first thing they say is, do you have any gas money? So, um, First Thessalonians uh, 5 and 11 in the New Living Translation says, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you already you are already doing. So um, the one thing I do like about coming here is that you guys are so encouraging. Even when with me, and I can speak for me, I can't speak for anyone else, but um, even when I don't feel like I'm doing my best, um, you all are so encouraging to where I feel like, yeah, I probably could do this. Um, and it has uh, made getting up here a lot easier. And so those words that you share um, with me, um, they, they, do, they do matter. And so I do ask that you continue to give genuine <laughs> encouragement. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, so blessing others honors God. Um, again, as Galatians 6 and 2 says, sharing each other's burdens in this way, you obey the law of Christ. Um, Ephesians 2 and 10. Um, the NIV says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So this is nothing new. God planned it in advance for us to be free from debt so that we could bless others. Okay. Um, Acts 20 and 35, the NIV, um, says the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Um, and it's so funny because that is something that I have, you know, kept in my in the back of my mind for years, ever since I was little. And so um, it was something my grandfather used to tell us. And I take so much joy in blessing others, um, giving gifts, and, you know, just, just generally helping people out of the kindness of my heart, not for any type of, you know, glory or anything like that. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a joy that it's hard to explain. Um, I, and don't get me wrong, I love to receive gifts. Um, but I'm, I think, and it's crazy, I'm so much happier when I give them because I love to see the look on people's faces and you know the joy that they receive yeah. when um, I give. And call that selfish, I'm okay with being selfish about blessing others. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I know that I'm talking a lot about giving to others, but guess what? There is a blessing in giving. Proverbs 22 and 9 says, and I paraphrase these, the generous will be blessed. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says the generous person will prosper. Hebrews 6 and 10 says, God will not forget the love you show by helping the poor. Proverbs 19 and 17, the Lord will reward you for helping the poor. So there is a blessing in helping. Just don't go into blessing others with the mindset of, what is God going to do for me? That is the wrong attitude. Um, I like to always say, it's a blessing to be a blessing. That is something that I say quite often. Um, and it really is a blessing to be a blessing because... Um, without the Lord, I wouldn't have a job. Without the job, I would not have those finances that I have to bless others. So yes, it is definitely a blessing to be a blessing. Um, now, um, I, I know you're thinking, okay, I'm giving away all this money. I'm giving away all this time. What does that leave for me? Got something for you for that too. <laughs> All right. 
Psalms 34, 8 through 9 says, and I'm paraphrasing partly, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who takes refuge in the Lord. Fear him and you will lack for nothing. Now, when you think of a lot of people in the natural think of fear, you know, it's, a, it's being scared. But um, in the biblical sense, fear means respect, honor, love. So when you respect, honor, and love God, you will lack for nothing. So in that, you will still be able to bless others. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever noticed that Sometimes when you have, um, you have bills, and you have a lot of bills, and you have a little money, and then you give your um, tithes, you pay your bills, and yet when you calculated before, you didn't have enough money. <laughs> but then when you got done paying the bills, you had an overflow. Uh -huh. I've had that happen, and I still couldn't figure it out. I just said, Thank you, Lord. I mean, like, what else can you say? Um, because you know that your math did not add and subtract right. to what was left over. And so um, that is because you are fearing the Lord. Um, in Psalm 23 and 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Um, I like to say, God is all I need, and I'm good. <laughs> All right, so, um, and it, you know, even the Bible has something just for the women. It says the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31 and 20 has extravagant generosity. That's awesome. That is some generosity, okay? Um, and she always helps the poor, okay? So I just wanted to... Um, just give a little testimony. Okay, a couple of testimonies. Um, um, because the Lord has been so good to me um, and to my, my husband. Um, so we, as you all know, we all decided, um, we had decided to become debt free. And we've done it many times. But there was something about it in December of last year that just, I don't know, it was as if I, you know, made the decision and that someone just pushed me and I went forward and it was at this amazing speed that I thought, oh wow, let me, you know, hold on tight because something amazing is about to happen. And so, like I said, it was December of um, last year when we decided that um, we wanted to become debt free by December of this year, so one year. And um, the Lord was on board because he doesn't want us to be in debt. He, does, he wants us to be the lender and not the borrower. And so we decided to sit down and calculate debt. Um, it was a lot <laughs> to the tune of $37,000. Um, that included, you know, oh, and the IRS, our truck, and um, credit cards. Um, did not include the house um, because that's even more debt. Um, but we thought we can get this done by December. So as we started to pay these things off, um, January, the IRS was paid off. Okay. March, the truck was paid off. Right now, we are still with the credit card thing, but 90% of the credit card is paid off. So by the end of this month, we will be debt free with the credit card, the truck, and the IRS. And so, you know, I calculated and I could not for the life of me figure out how we were able to pay, you know, $33,000 out of debt in eight months. Wow. Amen. Um, because we still have a lot, we still have a lot of bills on top of what you were trying to do. 
but I believe in the um, confession that we speak over our tithes and offerings. Um, and that's why I was uh, I mentioned that before that we should, you know, be happy and you know speak over your tithe and offering um, with a zeal, you know, just be that's all right. about it. That's right. And the and so I was like, yep, that is what I'm gonna do. And checks in the mail, Amen. you know. And I said, okay, okay, Lord, I see what you're doing here. Um, so, you know, even in all of that, you know, checks just still kept coming. People were saying that they owed us, that we overpaid on interest on things, like just random things. And I thought, wow, believing, mm -hmm. it's all about believing. You can say things all the time. Uh -huh. You can say them 50,000 times, uh -huh. but if you don't believe it, right. it's not gonna happen. Right. And so I believed, and in that, our mindsets changed. So it was more like, okay, we can afford these things, but do we need these things? And so we were able to cut back on the spending. Um, and then, you know, came up, the Lord keeps imparting these little nuggets in my, in my brain, and I love them because, you know, it's like, okay, now that you've done this, you pay these bills every month, I want you to put them on your credit card. And I thought, for real? The credit cards we're trying to pay off? And he said, yes. So the ones that were paid off, we started doing that. But we pay them every time they were due because that is what we were gonna do anyway. The credit cards um, offered rewards, cash rewards. And so some things that we had, like um, we love Sam's, and so you know we have the membership. It covered that when it was due again because of all the points that, that we had, you know gathered and earned. Um, we love Walmart, so we did that same thing with them, and we earned enough points to pay that membership. So in spending properly, we were able to earn money to pay for our spending. <laughs> you know, but that was what God said. So he told me, he said, what we're going to, what you're going to do is all of your bills from now on are going to go on those cards, but you have to, still got the budget because that is, you know, how we're going to do this. And that is, so I like to call that my little side hustle, <laughs> you know, because I like to shop anyway. So why not earn a little money on the side with that? Um, so um, with that, I just believe that, you know, just continue to believe that these things will happen for you. Um, and I've, like I said prior, we don't all have the same um, finances. Some of yours may be better than mine. Um, praise God. <laughs> you know, I am happy you know, for your blessing. And we have to do that. You know, we can't see other people's blessings and get jealous uh -huh. because what God has for you is for you. What God has for them is for them. Uh -huh. And so you have to keep that in mind and and wait. I have another, um, prayerfully, I will have a couple more testimonies coming in the next few months. So I'm really excited about some things. Um, another testimony I want to give is that... Um, the last week, okay, not last week, my car's been knocking a lot. When I would um, put it in reverse and turn the wheel, I'd hear this knocking sound. It was very quiet, so um, me being me um, said, oh yeah, okay, so I'll just back straight up and it doesn't knock so that I don't have to spend any money. <laughs> yes, I did that um, for two months. And then finally the noise got louder and there was nothing that I could do. So I said, okay, Lord, I need you to guide me somewhere because I remember your testimony, Pastor, about the Lord guiding you to work to get repairs done. And so I was praying about it and I was like, okay, Lord, I, 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 I researched and I know how much the average cost of this is gonna be. I said, so I'm just asking that you, um, first, when I get there, I don't want to wait a long time. 
I said, and then after that, I want you to um, bless me with an amount that I can afford. And um, I would like it to be done like today. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so demanding. Um, but the Lord knew my heart. But then I had to think about it. I said, Lord, you know what I can afford. Don't let it be what I can afford. Let it be way less than I can afford. <laughs> so um, as I'm driving, you know, I ended up going to, um, to the repair shop. And I get there, and they're like, okay, well, we'll get you in. And so that morning, they had let me off work for um, an hour, you know, come in an hour, because I uh, worked over time, like two hours over. And since they wanted to cut down on overtime, I'm like, yeah, so can I come in an hour late and leave an hour early? She was like, sure. I said, yes, because um, I didn't want to be at work. Anyway, so, <laughs> but thank you, Lord, for the job. Um, <laughs> so I get there at 8 05 because uh, I try, I really do try to get there on time. Um, and so there are other people ahead of me, and uh, I was just like, Yeah, this is not gonna be good. But the blessing in it was that I worked two blocks from the place, and so I called my office manager and I was like, Can somebody come get me? And she's like, I thought you were going to walk. I said, normally I would, but this is downtown and I have my purse. So we're going to be safe and not sorry. So she sent someone to get me. By the time I made it there, within 30 minutes, she calls and she goes, okay, um, so we know what's wrong with your car. I said, okay, give it to me. And she said, okay, I'm going to rip it off. I'm going to rip this Band-Aid off. And she gave me the price, and I said, thank you, Jesus. And she said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, uh, I was expecting almost three times that, and you just told me that? She said, no one ever is happy when I give these kind of numbers. <laughs> she, said, um, she said, well, whatever you did, you know, to get the uh, result that you want, keep doing it. I said, I prayed about it. Um, and so she said, I said, okay, so when can you do it? And she says, we can do it now. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay, let's go for it. So then she gives me a call at 1130 and she said, hey, your car is ready to be picked up. Oh. And I thought, well, oh, look God. at you, Lord. You he answer every single <laughs> one. Oh, and I said, well, look at that. You know, and I attribute that to the, you know, giving my tithe, blessing others. And so that's where that comes in, where you get blessed for being a blessing. Amen. And I thought, wow. So I went to pick up my car. Uh, they took me down there to get it. And I got back to work after lunch. I'd gone and gotten lunch and everything. <laughs> and someone asked, so when are you gonna get your car? I said, my car is outside the parking lot. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But it was just amazing how the Lord just answered that prayer. I mean, like, instantly. It took less than four hours to do everything. And it was under what I it had expected. And so, you know, our we should, like you said, not put God in a box. God can yes. do so much. And for someone else, that may seem, like, really simple. But that was so amazing to me that, you know, now with the extra that I actually have left over, you know, I'm able to bless others. I'm able to, um, you know, get this uh, card on down. And he is staying true to his promise to me that at the end of the year, this debt will be gone. And so I just thank him so much for allowing me to be, you know, to budget so that I can be a blessing or so that I can receive blessings to be a blessing. So I really do um, hope that this um, blessed you all as much as it blessed me um, because it was so exciting to, um, to do this lesson. It really was, I mean, I was excited about, you know, telling, showing you all how to get out of debt 
but it really made me excited to know why God wants us to be out of debt. Amen. So, Amen. many blessings to you all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That was an awesome word, Carla. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. That is, makes you want to uh, just give, you know, just be a, a greater giver than you already are. And I know that we're all, everybody in here are givers, you know, but it is just so awesome to see God work. It is just really a miracle. You know, sometimes I'm just awestruck at how God does things. And he loves to bless his people, and I love for God to bless me. Amen? Amen. And don't you love God to bless you, too? Amen. It's awesome. So uh, I know you're blessed tonight, and we're so glad that you joined us. And so uh, we're just looking forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Amen? Just join us and uh, have a blessed rest of the week. Praise God.